All right, hey guys, today's video, uh, we're just gonna kind of do a Tech Talk video, even though it's Monday, we could do a Tech Talk Tuesday, who knows, but uh, we're gonna talk about armatures and the ohm reading on armatures and um, just, you know, kind of talk the basics and then go a little bit more in depth on it. So basically in HO slot cars, the ohm rating of the armature is gonna be kind of an identifier of how fast that car or that armature is gonna be. So most stock cars come with a six ohm arm when we're talking like inline stuff, which is mainly what this video is gonna be about. Uh, but like Tyco 440s, they had about a six and a half ohm. Super G Plus, they were right around 6.2 ohms. And for the racing side that use those motors or those cars, usually they would spec them out. I think 5.8 was the minimum. And for years and years and years, 5.8 ohms was the very minimum for those classes. It still is to this day, um, but it was really tough to find an arm that was sub six ohms. And that's why guys would sort through tons and tons of motors. I mean, they would look through, buy a bunch of cars, trying to find those arms. Uh, and you know, when, when Viper, when we decided to make an arm, we actually just made it right to that spec. So right to the 5.8 ohms, uh, which you wouldn't think there's that big of a difference, but on a Tyco specifically going from like the majority, which is 6.3 to 6.5 and going all the way to a 5.8, it's quite a bit of a difference. Um, to me, I've always experienced that, like that I felt like it's a bigger difference than going down to like a three and a half ohm. Like a three and a half ohm obviously has a lot more power, but typically you're gonna run stronger magnets too. So it's kind of the balance is better, but um, that that's kind of just the, the skinny on most of the stock stuff and why like your V-Spec and your stock Wizard Storm, um, a lot of the stock cars that are out there, the aftermarket high performance cars, the BSRT, I think it's the 90, three or the 902, um, which was the G3, kind of like the staple box stock car, really good car. I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but you know, same thing had six ohm arm in it. And when you upgrade arms, you'll almost always see them go straight to like a 3.5 or a three ohm or a 2.5 and just continue to go down. But um, once you get into say a 3.5 ohm, which is kind of like the next step down that we'll talk about. That is probably too much power for a stock magnet setup uh, or like a level four magnet setup. So it's kind of a, a balance, six ohm, level four. And as you go down to a three and a half ohm, you need to kind of go up on magnet strength. So it's kind of, it's kind of, and that's where I think where people get confused because as you go down in ohms, you go up in magnet strength. And so the balance is actually on a graph is imbalanced, if that makes sense. But basically more power, more magnet. That's, that's the way that I can simply explain that to you. Um, but for like a 3.5 ohm car, a really good combo is level four motor magnets and level 10 traction magnets. A lot of times you'll hear that called a 410 setup, um, which is four motor, 10 tractions. You can run ceramic motor mags and the 10 tractions. I mean, there's all kinds of combos out there, um, but there's not really classes for those. And that's why a lot of times those aren't as popular. And that's why there's not like ready to run cars made for them. But it could be a fun class to have for your local club racing, or if you, you know, if you do, um, like Saturday night races with just a group of buddies or whatnot, and you're not technically a club. Absolutely. Those are great. Uh, same thing goes for the Tyco. You know, if you're running a 3.5 ohm in the Tyco level four motor mags, um, probably a pro eight traction, or you could go to a pro 10 traction. Uh, typically, on those cars, you'll you'll want to raise them up a little bit too when you run those magnets. But to get back to the, the motor talk, I mean, once we get down to sub three ohms, like we have a 2.5 ohm, we have a 2.5 ohm wide gap, we have a 1.5 ohm uh, 
those are pretty hot motors and usually those are running you know we're going to be running those with a level 10 magnet setup and maybe even a stronger traction mag than a level 10 but um, something that i wanted to point out and one of the things i want to emphasize in this video is just because arm a is a 2.5 ohm and arm b is a 2.5 ohm they can behave completely differently okay this could be a green wire this could be you know a hand wound 2.5 like there's a lot of difference in that and so you can't take the ohm rating as just the standard on it um, because not all arms are created equal and i know this is going to create a lot more questions than it will answers but i'm just letting you know you know if you happen to buy a a cheap green wire 2.6 ohm arm you know 10 years ago uh, most likely that's a 36 gauge arm it's a machine wound it's um, crimped it's not soldered it's you know who knows what else but don't think if you had a bad experience with that and you thought oh, well it didn't really make that much power it wasn't that much faster comparing that to a modern like 2.5 ohm wide gap that's been epoxied and all that stuff like that arm is gonna it's gonna make so much more power um, there is other factors in there you know even wire size so the different wire size and that's been something that i've actually been playing around with a bunch on the hand wound arms that i've been doing is seeing which different winds of different lengths and wire sizes produce the same ohm reading and now when we go to track test those i want to see what the behavior characteristics are on them i i, I have a pretty good idea of what they're going to be but um, when we start doing that you know we'll, we'll kind of cover back on this topic and maybe we'll do a video on like the track testing of those uh, but a lot of times i mean i'm trying to keep this stuff as simple as possible to not confuse anybody um, but to get back to the wire size, if you have a small wire 2.5 ohm versus a big wire 2.5 ohm, which that's another confusing thing because the higher the number of wire gauge, the smaller that it is. I don't know why they do that, but that's just the way that it is. So a 35 gauge 2.5 ohm running against a 36 gauge 2.5 ohm, the the 35 gauge wire arm is going to be a lot more uh, torquey and uh, it's going to be it's probably going to be a little bit heavier too but it's going to make more torque it's going to have a lot more like rip out of the corners whereas the smaller gauge arm is going to be a little bit softer on the bottom it might need different gearing but it's also going to rev higher on the top end um, but something to point out too is that the heavier gauge arm is going to definitely be able to handle a lot more temperature than the um, the smaller gauge arm so we usually call small gauge arms like a, a small block just because it's it's smaller wire um, but it really starts to get like we start to talk like once you get sub two ohms you actually start to talk about wire length and the gauge and that's kind of what guys say oh i have a 35 in it or i have a 34 and a half or a 35 and a half typically the ohm is kind of just like it's a byproduct of that but it's it's kind of secondary as to what we discuss when we talk that so like if we were talking about a neo armature you know it's sub one ohms almost always you're going to be under an ohm but if you just say i have a 34 gauge arm like there could be a 1.3 ohm 34 i mean you could get all the way down to like a 0.8 or a 0.7 if you had a, a short wire 34 those are all going to behave totally different and so that's why usually guys will say i have a four foot of 34 which is going to be a 0.8 ohm um, but you know hopefully you guys found this video interesting hopefully it's not too confusing but you know honestly if it is feel free to ask questions and um, those questions will help me 
explain things better for future videos and obviously I'll answer them in the comments. So hopefully um, made some sense out of that. See you guys on the next one.